Hi students, this is the video for unit 27. And here we're going to start looking at threads, believe it or not. Not threads like your mom used, but threads like they use on the machine shop floor or like a mechanic uses on a, uh, uh, in a garage or like an aircraft mechanic uses in a hangar. Okay, I'm going to have a look here. Oh boy, here we go. He'd be coming up here in just a minute. So unit 27, thread formulas. The objectives are to discuss the use of standard threads in the unified uh, thread system, abbreviated UTS. Describe how to find the pitch of a thread when threads per inch, TPI, is known. Explain how to determine thread height. Well, thread formulas, uh, they come from the specification or they're derived from the specification, the UTS, uh, Unified National uh, Standard. And below is a picture of um, a bolt that has most of the major uh, things uh, specified on there in dimensions. For instance, uh, if you look at this dimension right here, That's called the major diameter. It is the distance from the peak of the thread on one side of the bolt to the peak of the thread on the opposite side of the bolt. The next one over the thread height. That's the, the height from the base of the, th of the thread to the peak of a thread. And all these threads are the same, by the way. Okay, the pitch is the distance between the peaks of two adjacent threads. It's also the distance between the, the depths of the two adjacent threads, any two threads, it is uniform. And the threads per inch tells you how many, literally how many threads per inch there are. It, it's uh, what it says it is. The reason the UTS standard is required is because um, bolts, nuts, um, all sorts of mechanical parts that thread together are made by multiple different manufacturers. And in order for everything to fit together like it's supposed to, everything has to be made to a standard. So this is an industry standard that everybody adheres to. So you could buy a bolt from company A and a bolt, a, a nut from company B to the same standard is supposed to thread onto that bolt. If that weren't true, life would be a mess. Uh, it's not, it actually works pretty well because of the standard. And here is the example of a standard uh, uh, part number for a bolt. Uh, one half dash 12 UNC dash three ALH. And all the arrows and verbiage here tell you what everything is on a, um, a bolt that's made in or used in North America or Canada, who uses this universal uh, thread standard, that one half is the major diameter of the bolt. <coughs> Excuse me. As long as the bolt is uh, more than a quarter of inch, a quarter inch or more in diameter. <coughs> If the bolt or screw is um, less than a quarter of an inch, then they go by numbers. Uh, for instance, a number 10 has a major diameter of 0 0.190. A number six has a diameter of 1.138 and et cetera. This goes down to um, a number four, which is also quite common and a number two. I don't know if there's anything below a number two and I don't know the, uh, the diameters of a number four or a number two. Moving over, the 12 in this spec is the number of threads per inch. Or in other words, this bolt has 12 threads per every inch, which means it has six threads for every half inch, if you wanna look at it that way. Uh, the UNC specifies the, uh, the series of the threads. UNC says that this is unified national course. 
So these are national coarse threads. It could also have been a UNF, which stands for fine threads, or UNEF, which stands for extra fine threads. And if you were to look up the, uh, the UTS spec online, you'd find out that there's a whole lot more series than just these three. But for this class, uh, these three are going to be plenty. Moving along, the three specifies the tolerance, or tells you the tolerance specification. More about that below. The A tells you that these are external threads, like on a bolt or a screw, as opposed to internal threads, like a threaded hole or a nut. And the LH uh, specifies that these are left-handed threads. Left-handed means that uh, it tightens when the nut is turned counterclockwise onto the bolt, as opposed to right-handed where it's turned clockwise to tighten. Uh, tolerance comes in five classes, class one being a loose fit, the loosest of all fits, and class five being what's called an interference fit, meaning it is so tight that it requires a wrench for turning. And uh, there are classes all the way from one to five. Class two or three is the most common. Metrics threads have their own uh, specification, their own standard. And metric is what's used pretty much the rest of the world besides the United States and Canada. And in fact, you'll find metric threads used uh, or metric specifications all over the place in the US and Canada. Um, usually that's, or possibly that's because of uh, companies that have locations overseas where they use metric. So a lot of shop floors, you will see a mix of things. The uh, calipers I held up during the last video uh, had metric on one side of the scale and um, inches on the other side of the scale. Not unusual at all. Anyways, on the metric specification, they all start out with the letter M, which says this is a metric spec. The next numbers specify the diameter, the outside diameter of the bolt in units of millimeters. So this is a good sized bolt. The uh, the times and then the number uh, 1.75 in this example, uh, that's the pitch, the pitch being the distance between uh, thread uh, peaks. Notice the difference between that and the North American or Canadian spec where they don't tell you pitch, they tell you threads per inch. There's a relationship between pitch and threads per inch and we're gonna get to it here in a second. And then times and then the last digits are simply the length of the bolt in millimeters. Um, I believe that's the length of the shaft, which is not the entire bolt, because of course the bolt has a head. So the first formula we run into gives you the relationship between pitch and threads per inch. So if you're working with um, a UTS specification and you're given the threads per inch as part of the spec and you want to know the pitch, all you do is take what's called the inverse of the threads per inch, and you will get the pitch, and the units will be inches. Also, if you work with this formula a little bit, you can manipulate it so that you can solve it for threads per inch in terms of pitch. So that in case you're working with a metric uh, bolt where you're told the pitch and you want to know the threads per inch, this is the formula you would use, except TPI is not the right symbol the proper symbol would probably be TPMM, threads per millimeter. The micrometer example that we looked at uh, in the last unit, where the threads per inch were 40, the pitch is one over the threads per inch, which would be one over 40. And you can run that on your calculator, it'll come back and tell you point, uh, 0 0.025. And of course the units would be inches because the threads are specified in threads per inch. And that's why every time you make one complete revolution of the spindle, it moves it 25 thousandths along the sleeve. In if you're turning it clockwise, uh, out if you're turning it counterclockwise. 
So there's the, uh, the formulas applied to the micrometer example that we looked at before. And a couple of examples here. How many threads per millimeter are in an M16 by 2.0 thread? Well, pitch is one over threads per millimeter. And uh, I'll let you read through the math here. Um, it gets down to the point where threads per millimeter is one over 2.0 or 0.5 threads per millimeter. Another way to look at doing this is to take the uh, pitch, which is 2.0, put it over a denominator of one, and then that's equal to the reciprocal of threads per millimeter. And then just take both the left side and the right side of this equation and flip them, meaning reverse the numerators and denominators. So when you take 2.0 over one, it becomes one over 2.0, which is equivalent to the decimal 0.5. And the one over TPMM, when you flip it, becomes just TPMM. And it's already solved once you've done that. To me, that's just a little bit easier. Um, I will let you decide what's best for you. And now we get to the, uh, the definition of thread height. The formula is that the height of a thread is 0.866 times its pitch. So thread height and uh, P is thread pitch. So this example in 27-3, the bolt has a part number 516-18 UNC and then maybe some more stuff. But the important thing we want is the 18 because that tells us the threads per inch. So if we take one over 18, we will get the pitch. And if you punch this into your calculator, that's what you should get, 0 0.056 inches. And then the height uses that pitch multiplies it by 0.866. And that math is done down here. And we get an answer of 0 0.048 inches. So notice how the height is, is always a bit less than the pitch. I've made an attempt here to make a drawing to show you the pitch and the height. And the reason for it, although the actual reason goes into some math called trigonometry, and we're not going to do trigonometry now, though we will soon enough. Um, the thread heights, adjacent thread heights, make an angle of 60 degrees. And also the angle down at the well, at the depths of uh, the threads, also makes an angle of 60 degrees. And if you know anything about triangles, triangle where all the angles are 60 degrees is called equilateral. Okay. And if we know the, um, the length of any one of the sides, then the height would be, do it in a different color, the height would be a line drawn from the vertex of one angle perpendicular to the opposite side. And that height would equal uh, 0 0.8666 times the length of one of the sides. And that all falls out of, uh, again, trigonometry, which we will get to later. But here's a picture uh, showing you, and I didn't do a very good job of making the 60 degree angles, but this shows you the relationship between pitch and height. And I know this drawing makes the heights look like it's longer than pitch. It really isn't. It's just a bad drawing. Okay, moving on to some of the um, problem assignments. We have a bolt whose part number is 716-14UNC-2A times 2.2 uh, and a half. And here's a picture of the bolt drawn by me. The two and a half is actually the length of the bolt, the sh from the tip of the bolt all the way back to the bottom of the head, which is the length of the shaft of the bolt. The shaft being the threaded part plus the unthreaded part that goes between the head and the uh, threads. 
So we're asked to identify from the spec, what is number one? Number one is the outside or major diameter. Number two is the threads per inch. Number three, the UNC tells us that these are coarse threads. Number four, the 2A tells us the tolerance. This is number two, which is a fairly sloppy fit. And the A tells us that these are external threads. And then five tells us, as we mentioned before, the length of the bolt. I'm gonna do the same thing with a metric spec, M8 by 1.0 by 20. Uh, number six from the spec tells us that this is metric. That tells you what the rest of the spec means. Number seven is the major diameter, that being eight millimeters. Number eight is the pitch. So that pitch is one millimeter between uh, thread peaks. And number nine is the length of the uh, of the bolt in millimeters, so it's 20 millimeters long. Number 13, compute the height of a 7 8 14 UNF thread to three decimal places. Well, the strategy is we're going to take the threads per inch, which we're given. We're going to convert it to pitch by taking one over the threads per inch. And then we're going to use that pitch multiply it by 0.866, and that will give us the height. So that's the strategy. On your calculator, if you just enter 14 X inverse equal, that X to the minus one uh, says take whatever I just entered and take one over it. The X to the minus one key is in the fifth row second column of your TI 30 X calculator. And the number that comes out of this uh, 0 0.07143 is the pitch, which you now substitute into the equation for the height multiplied by 0.866. And what comes out, if you do this on your calculator, 0 0.06186 and some more digits, but we're supposed to report to the nearest thousandth which means that we keep this digit position and we test this one, the eight. The eight says bump the one up to two. So we report the answer as the height is equal to 0 0.062, 62 thousandths of an inch. And that's the end of this video. We will see you for the next one.